So this is the Rip Ass Podcast. <laughs> As I just did. Uh, today we're talking about fantasy football. And right here I have with me one time champ, but he'll claim it's been three or four times. Four. Four? Four, four and how long? Two. In five years. And so in five four years, champs. this man claims to have won the fantasy football league. I haven't been in any one of them, so that's probably why he's won them. Because you're too afraid oh, damn. to come okay. back. Too so, to come back. so four time champion. And these are all for money, I'm, I, I gather. All for money. How much would you say you've earned over the last four was it four uh, years? Over the it's been over the course of five years, I've won four championships. So four championships in the last five years. Would you? So just, I would say there was there's three years. So out of those five years, I've only won three years. It was one year where I won both of my leagues in the same year. Ah, okay. So would you consider yeah. yourself a dynasty? I consider myself a grandmaster. Okay. See, I was gonna say dynasty grandmaster makes of fan- you a chauvinist. A fantasy class. football information. I am the grandmaster. Okay, and I can. I just, I just know. I just know. And when it comes to see, Fanduel is something else we're going to get to. Okay. But when it comes to regular twelve team, ten team leagues, I don't do the whole sixteen you team stuff. You the, the tw- I, I'm very dumb. I'm terrifying. That's what I am. I'm terrifying. <laughs> Give me an example of terrifying. Because you, know, you have no. So terrifying is. Wait, wait. wait let me you, find it in the dictionary first. Let me see. <laughs> so if I Google terrifying right now. You're going to see a picture of me with my fantasy football championships. <laughs> you, it's funny, though, because I expect to sound like a demon, the devil, hereditary, the movies that just came I'm out. Right, I'm right next to Beezlebub <laughs> and, right be- and right before Baphomet. <laughs> Terrifying. So the definition is cause to feel extreme fear. So that's what you yeah. impose on people. That's what you're telling me. You're, you're yeah, telling I impose that. And, and when you impose extreme fear onto people... They make very bad decisions. Very bold moves, okay. I would say. Very bold. Give me moves. one example. Almost desperate, desperate moves. Okay, so I so heard. I had... Go on. No, no, there was definitely. So go ahead. What, what have you heard about me? There was what a rumor circling the fantasy <laughs> mill last year that um maybe not last year, maybe the year before that that um that uh, there was who that who against the champion? that um. That a couple, couple different organizations, they um conspired against you to try to keep you out of the playoffs. That's right. And That's why do you think they would go? Why do you think that certain people would take that route when it comes to you specifically? First, one, because first go down. One, what were the circumstances, and what was there to win? Well, the, so the circumstances were: this was the the last week of the of the fantasy football season, the regular season. So it's week thirteen, and I needed to either the scenario was league. the scenario was it was between me and my brother, okay, who who is actually the second worst fantasy football player in league history. <laughs> now, do you, there's you somebody say... worse than there's somebody worse than him, but well, I guess he'll come up later on. But my brother for sure is the second worst fantasy football player I've ever seen, and also in that league. <laughs> um, Worldwide, <laughs> this is worldwide we're talking. What'd you say? Uh, you're, you're, you're talking you're worldwide, or, or, he's like the best you've ever, you've ever seen. The worst, the best at being the worst. If you want to, if you want to play like wow. that, wow. he's pretty lot. bad. He doesn't make for, he doesn't know football at all. At so all. I think he's just a Giants fan. So whoa, the Giants whoa, fans whoa. are known for their their, wow. their high. Okay, we're we going there. Okay. No, no, but regardless, so the, the circumstance was it was uh, – this is my uh, defending year, right? So this is the – I won the year before, so I'm defending We champion. know what defending so, means, all right? Just continue. Right. So I'm defending champion, and so last week I've been having a very up-and-down season. Uh, Mike, I think – what was it? I think it was either probably my running back. I don't. I would have to go back to the league. It was a few years ago. Um, and uh, there was definitely something off with my team. It could have been quarterback or running back. But regardless, my team was – up and down all year and the scenario was it was between me and my brother so either one of us could have made it we were fighting for the last spot right and if i lost and he lost i'm in because okay. i scored more points than him right so that i i would win the tiebreaker there was nothing there's nothing he could do in one week to overcome the amount of points that i had 
uh, versus the amount of points he had for the season. So we're there. So if so, obviously, if I if I win, I'm in. So I, if I just win, it doesn't matter what he does. Okay. I'm in. So I lost my game. I lost my game that day. So I was, you know, anxious. I was anxious to see what what would happen because my brother was losing his game, and he was losing it pretty badly. Uh, I think he was down maybe by twenty to thirty points, if I remember correctly. And then and this is a common guy, occurrence. That's what you're saying with your brother. Yeah, he's he's always like. He's never really in the mix. There's only been one time that he made it to the finals. I beat him that, that year. I remember. I beat him that fi- in those finals. I was no, the champ. No, no, this, no. No, I was, I that, was the no. champ. Those were the, those were the unofficial <laughs> leagues that have been discounted for the record because mm-hmm. nobody paid any money. So those are all considered B leagues. We're in the A leagues now. We're in the A leagues now. So it's kind of like you know the, uh, the, the AFL. Those championships that the Houston Oilers won don't count. Those still let me only only the NFL counts, and what the leagues I'm in right now, the last what five or six years it's been, AF uh, they're NFL level, NFL level leagues. Yo. So all that all that bullshit you had from when we were like 15 years old does not count. Okay, it doesn't even matter, bro. Okay, okay? so you gotta let those go. Let it. No, let I'm let not. It, no, just gotta let them go. You gotta let them go because you've been. Horrific. Since okay, so back NFL. to your brother. Since right? the A League started, so, you've been bad. So finish your story. Bad. So you needed a win. <laughs> so you didn't been, get a win. Your brother needed a I win. I didn't get as a win. Well. My brother was losing. My brother was losing, and the guy that he uh, he was playing against was one of the most desperate people I've ever seen in my life, ever. I've never seen such. He's the most scared. He was the most scared of them all. To allow my brother. To, who's the probably the, the biggest shit talker? Even though he loses so often, you know, notoriously, if he, the if he wins one out of a hundred, that's the only one that matters. <laughs> right, right, right. Out of a hundred, so you got to remember that you can't even give him a finals appearance. He just hold it over you for as long as he possibly can. <laughs> it doesn't matter if he keeps losing. He always ha- he can always point to that one time. <laughs> so he's the worst. You don't want to, to do that with him. So he, so this guy, let's just I, I'm not going to mention his name. He's not worthy of, of my lips speaking his name. <coughs> so this guy, this this fat guy, he uh, <laughs> this this morbidly obese guy, he decided to bench the remainder Ooh. of the team in an attempt to to pull a coup against the king. Hold, hold on, pause it right there. Hold on a second. Yo. <coughs> what do you mean? What's wrong with those? It just stops working. It goes, it goes, and then it stops working, and then it goes back on, and then it goes. Did you break it? No. Um. Does you have headphones at home? Yeah. How you don't bring that? I have headphones at home. Why don't you bring it? That's what I'm saying. Because it doesn't work. Go ahead. I hate when you just rip it out of my... <sighs> you damn kids. <laughs> Get off my lawn. It's still recording though, right? I don't know. Is it? Yeah, it's still yeah. recording. It's, oh yeah, I can edit this all up. Alright, so back to what I was saying before. Wait, 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 wait. So, I'll tell you. Hold on, hold on. Yo, can we shoot? I'm taking out the table. That baby poop? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> oh. Did, did she just poop? Because I smell poop. Oh. All right, let me know when you're ready. Oh, well, you just continue when you can. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so this morbidly obese uh, fantasy owner decided to bench the remainder of his players so my brother could win because the only way my brother could get in is if I lost and he won. So my brother got in, and uh, that fat SOB that pulled a tool against me got eliminated immediately along with his other detractors and 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 mutinous 
and it's freaking <laughs> assholes. <laughs> so yeah, they all got what they deserved. That's crazy. None of, none of them made it to the finals. So they all conspired against you. My brother made it, and and a, and a, and an outsider to the group made it. We had a, a uh, uh, we had to find a, a final team to join. So I asked my girlfriend's close friend Richard to come and play, mm. and I think it was his first year playing with us. And he wins the whole thing, beating my brother. Nice. Because there's nothing better than my brother also losing in the finals to see his agony and to That's, see his so to put so, so to put this in impressive. perspective, they had a coup against you, right? Okay. Conspired against you to try to keep and you no, out from making the championship. They all yeah, they lose. Because they weren't afraid of me making it to the playoffs. They were afraid of me winning the whole thing. Okay, so because they my all team was lose. Get extremely hot. Yeah. My team was coming in hot, even though I lost that week. I wound up scoring, I think, the second most fantasy points in the playoffs outside of my girlfriend. So she was into the so playoffs. You, you probably would have won if you would have, if if you would have made it. I definitely would have made it to the finals. I definitely would have made it to the finals. I don't recall if I would have won or not. I didn't remember. Uh, okay, so that's a no. You would have lost. But anyway, but you, they conspired against you, and the man that took your spot almost went and won it. Who's at also yeah. your brother, right? And the biggest shit talker on this planet. Yeah, Un- unrightfully so too. So, like, so I, we would have had no to. to shit talk. We would have had to listen to that for a couple of years. Forever, for, forever. forever. If you, you would have won, it's forever. Did it's he? Forever. Didn't he lose by like point four or something like that? Or like yeah, he lost by he, he lost by very very little. Wow, it was. That's just so crushing. Loss. Yeah, that's so crushing. Yeah, crazy. so like I was saying, he should have done the right thing. And he should have benched the remainder of his players to allow me to earn my right. I don't spot see that the as the right off. thing, though. No one in it right is the right thing. It is the right thing because when you see when you see such a disgusting move happening in front of you, something oh, you should be criminal, shiver, shiver, shiver. criminals. It was criminal what they did to me. So it, it was. Yeah, I wouldn't it, say it's criminal. I would say you should criminal. you should probably possibly take. They pride. have zero. Those those people that conspired against me have zero honor. They'll this, never bring honor football. to their families ever again. This football ain't much honor in football, bro. If and, you want honor, take your ass to baseball. That's why, and that ex- that's exactly why I have more championships than everybody. Because you have and honor. why, and those people who have conspired against me still haven't won anything. Yeah, let's see who had honor. Um, what's his face? Edward Stark had honor. He's headless. Yes, he had his head chopped off. That's yeah, right. Yeah, even King, the King, had honor. Who, he which got one? poked Stannis? by a boar. No. I mean, Stannis oh, oh, had yeah. honors, but he was just kind of aiming down the wrong path. He was listening to this redhead, you know. Anytime you yeah, listen I, to a redhead, I, I that's I think we just... realized that when he murdered his own daughter. Yeah, yeah that's... that too. That too. Yeah. But um, you listen to a redhead, and that usually leads you down a bad path. Just saying. Yeah, they are soulless monsters, that those means, gingers. Uh, yeah. yeah so. <laughs> They're basically vampires. Who else has honor? Um... Jesus had honor. That's right. And he's dead. He got nailed to a cross. He got nailed to a cross. So as you can see, uh, people were honored. They don't see the most but happy was ending. was he blessed as well because he came back. Yeah, that's to heaven, true. Absolved us of our sins. That's true. So he was a zombie. Still dead, though. He was a zombie. Yeah. He came back in, like, spirit form, like a really strong spirit form. Right. Like when Goku dies. And he just, okay. he like, it's like that. But See, now, Goku has honor. Right, Goku has tons of honor. But he's a terrible father. Not a very, he's he's a fighter before a father. And he's a hero for that. And he's a hero, right? Yeah. So all that honor goes out though. You have to. Well, are you? I mean, his son was a well aware of of his what his dad was. So I don't think it's that bad. Okay, I don't even know where I'm going with this honor thing. To be honest with you, Apollo Creed well, had honor. He did, and he died from a punch. A lot of dead people from from honor. You, you, yeah, you, you see, you see where this is trending, right? Yeah. So forget the honor. It's about winning. That's the only thing that matters in this world. Win. I understand. And it doesn't matter how you do I it. I know, and I know how to do that better than anybody. No, it doesn't matter how you get you the win. Me, and if you shout out to me, Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, don't ever make. It doesn't matter as long as you get the win. All that matters. That's very true. Right. That's very true. Now, staying on the trend of Game of Thrones for a brief moment, who do you think is going to win the Iron Throne? 
Um, I don't think there'll be one left to win. Ah, so you see, they're just gonna wipe themselves out altogether. Yeah. Okay. I think. Uh, I think that I have potentially. I see every 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 single human losing that battle, and they will have the what is it, thousand years of darkness or something like that. Some prophecy that was told. Okay. Uh, now, who do you see winning the gridiron throne? Who should be the number one drafted player this year in fantasy football? I'm going with Todd. Wait, wait, wait. Rate that segue from one to ten. I give it a ten. Anything with Game of Thrones. I will continue to go with the, the conversation at hand. Todd Gurley. <laughs> I told you, I'm not going to be addressing these these things from you. <laughs> we, I give it a ten. Discussions. We talk about this. We talk about this. So I gotta, hate you. I guess you have to have a post production conversation about <laughs> your demeanor I hate on this. Dude. I on really this hate him. <laughs> um, Todd Gurley should be the number one drafted player. Todd Gurley. Todd why, Gurley why do you is, think Todd Gurley is the king dingling of the season? Yeah, you sure? think so? Yeah. Who was the number one He's drafted player low. last week? He's hanging the real consensus low. number one player. He, he, yeah, he no, is. Last I think year, last year, who was it? Number one overall? Yeah. Who would you say was the consensus number one player? I mean, it's hard because Le'Veon though, Bell definitely. I mean, Le'Veon Bell is for sure the You think last, so? even I, more than yeah. David Johnson? Because I heard a lot of David Johnson last year. Well, David Johnson was is, is the serviceable. He's serviceable. You know, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't feel like last year was a tough break for him. He was playing well up until that point, but the team didn't look very good, and now they're worse. Right. So I don't see how I, I couldn't possibly put him as number one. Ah, uh, okay. Is, so, he has, is he have the physical skill set? Sure, whatever, but that doesn't mean anything. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna create your top five rules to draft in this year in fantasy. Not this whole, not the whole draft. The top five rules to draft in. I guess your top five players, we could say, so right? First five rounds of strategy for the first five okay. rounds. And if we if we're having success, we'll make it a top ten. If it's if we're flowing, basically, right, right. right? So rule number one, I think you just said it. It's to make sure your team, the player you're picking, has a solid team around him. I guess you could. Yeah, that. you're gonna need some thing as you know football. Outside of a few outliers like Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, you're not really gonna get too many guys that can carry an entire team by themselves so uh, you definitely want to look into somebody who has a really strong supporting cast because if he's already a great player a strong supporting cast is only going to make him greater right. so that's really what i tend to focus on is who's who has the better surrounding cast around them so that they're not so if, if it's a running back does he have a good passing game around him so that he's not going to see you know, nine man boxes and stuff like that. Ten man right. boxes with damn near the whole team is expecting him to to run the rock because there's no threat to pass. We don't need those Tim Tebow offenses around our. Oh no, backs. we don't. You know? We don't need that for it anywhere. No. So yeah, so we need to focus on the, those guys. Like the Rams have a really good passing offense. As long as Sean McVay is the head coach there and calling the plays, that team is always going to be explosive. They have really good players on their team. They have you know Robert Woods. They have your boy, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Cook, Brandon Cooks. Yeah, they have Brandon Cooks now. That's right. They do have Brandon Cooks. And they have the uh, and Cooper the, Cup. And Cooper they have Cup, Cooper yeah. Cup. Yeah. Cooper yeah. Cup is, a, is definitely more of an up-and-coming player for me. He's, he's a, he, well, I guess we'll talk about him later. But he's definitely somebody to keep an eye on for this year. Okay. On top of Taco. That offense was the highest-scoring offense Okay, last give me year. one sec. The phone's ringing. Hold on. Who the nigga is that? Now I'm starting to think about it. I think nighttime would be our best time just to do this. Okay. So it's a lot quieter. Or like early morning. Yeah. You could do that. I didn't know the kids were coming today. I didn't even think my pup, anyone knew. It's all good though. Ice cream trucks outside. Oh, I want to see if he gets <laughs> it in it. I don't mind talking with this shit. I don't care if it's back there. <clears throat> um, so, okay. So that's rule number one. Make sure there's a good supporting cast. Okay. Now, yeah, so. now, my thing is, 
Let me let the truck pass because that should sound like it's leaving. Yeah, okay. So my thing is, right, when it comes to when it comes to having a good supporting cast, you I, I think there's like a fine line between having one that's too good so they don't necessarily rely on that player you're trying to pick. For example, let's say you had like Marshall Falk, right, back in his heydays, but then you had Tory Hull, Isaac Bruce, and you had like a good tight end, right? Don't you think that there's a, a certain type of risk that goes into picking someone like Marshall Falk when the team is so stacked around him? Well, no, not, not really just because, especially with running back. Maybe with wide receiver, the, the dynamics change a little bit when you have a stacked team like that. But at running back, most offenses, most offenses that are going to be good and they score a lot of points are going to need to have a good running game. So if the team has an amazing pass offense, and they have no talent at running back. You're essentially the Saints. You know, okay. You're essentially the Saints for like five or six years. It's like just scoring a lot of points, but can't really win any games because you don't really have the running game to, to help take the attention away off the pass. So the team game plans around you. They really can't just focus on the pass and okay. kind of shut, make you one dimensional and, and, and have a shootout with you because their defense is also bad, which is also, it also goes into the value of a running back or, or another offensive skill player. If the defense is good, you're going to wind up getting the offense more chances. So the supporting cast is, is a mixture of things. It's, it's the, not just your offensive line, but if your quarterback is good, wide receivers are solid, uh, you know, your defense is giving you your offense more opportunities, okay. uh, which the Rams for sure will be doing this year with the additions that they made. That's, that's a scary defense. They were good last year. They were good last year. They're going to be great this year, that defense. So that's going to be – as long as everyone stays healthy. So I have, I think we'll see. I think that could be our second rule. Now, this is not necessarily in order. It's just like five. Yeah. Okay. I think having a good defense means a lot more opportunity for your player. Whether yes. it's tight end, wide receiver, it doesn't right. matter. Yeah. It, it, it branches out. It's true. Yeah. So I think the second rule could be good defense, good opportunities, right? Yeah. So that's, and the defense could potentially put your offense into really good field position as well with, with you know, whatever sacks or turnovers they wind up getting. So it can make things easier for the offense, even if the offense is a little lacking, kind of like the Jaguars last year. I, that's have, exactly what I was thinking of. I was just thinking yeah, of the Jaguars. That. Like, we all know that Blake Bortles is not a very good quarterback. That's not something that anybody has to, to question. And even though he did okay last year, no one can say he's in the top 15 quarterbacks. You know, he's, only, he's only there because of the defense. Maybe in fantasy football he's worth picking up, but he's always going to be a quarterback too. Nobody should be foolish enough. I don't to even think he's a two, but that's me personally. He can be a two. I mean, desperation. Let's too. Let's, let's see. Let's, let's Yeah, I mean, desperation too. Uh, but the truth is that defense is going to put him in a lot of positive field positions. So he's going to get a chance to score a lot. It's a lot easier. To score when you only have 30 yards to go. That's true. So you can kind of call your best plays, and you don't have to. Yeah. The defense is on their toes more. It's when you have these long drives that the defense tends to keep grinding you down if you can't score. They can just keep grinding you down, and offense eventually stalls out. An offense like that, not an elite offense, but an offense like the Jaguars can get stalled out a lot because they don't have the talent. So the longer drives are going to be a detriment to them. Shorter drives are going to be amazing because they get to call their best plays and really play like a quick chess match with the defense and get the points that they need. That's why the Jaguars were so dangerous last year. The defense was amazing. And the defense was scoring, too. They had, like, nine touchdowns of some insane. So with that like being that. said, right, would you go Fournette or would you go Davis, um, David Johnson? Even though Johnson's coming off the injury. He's coming off a wrist injury, so right. I don't think that's so bad. Uh, two wrist injuries. Uh, he broke both of his wrists. So that's not, to me, based on. Yeah, to me, based on the nature of that kind of injury, that's not really something we need to worry about. Um, lots of guys come back from, from broken arms and broken ribs, and they make full contact, and they're back to, I mean, back to normal for an NFL player, maybe not a regular person, but he's he'll be he'll be good enough for this year. He's had a long, I mean, he got hurt early in the season. It wasn't like he played 15 games and got hurt, but he's been rehabbing that. We have wrist injuries is pretty long, but it's he's had more than enough time now, so he should be back. And his legs are extremely fresh, 
and the way that he plays football with all the explosive lateral movements he uses that's <clears throat> that's gonna be good the guy he's gonna shine this year but if they can't get the ball to Larry Fitzgerald and they can't move and they can't keep the chains moving like if and they don't need to have a prolific passing offense this year to, to have a, a, a decent offense they just need to get uh, David Johnson the ball as often as they can but See, it's not going to work defenses aren't ke- aren't being kept honest yeah so I think the the Fitzgerald thing is you know he's still a very good slot receiver he's he is yo he was like number 20 something the game, on, the, on the top yeah. 100 like his stats are crazy he's, yeah, his stats crazy. Are, but the thing is he's playing the slot now and that's not really going to be so, again you, he can't carry you you're going to need David Johnson to do some work as well. And their offensive line, who knows? I don't know yeah. how they're going to play. See, yeah, I, that would, team, I personally that team has stay a new away staff from him. Now. You know, Bruce Arians is gone. There's a new yeah. staff. I don't know what to expect exactly. from them. I, you don't, not that's thinking. number one. You don't know what, Johnson, you don't know what you're going to get from the defense, right? Yeah, I, you don't yeah, know exactly. what you're going to get from the quarterback. Sorry, Matthew's gone. Yeah, they lost Matthew. You don't know what you're going to get from the quarterback. You don't know if you're getting Josh Rosen or whoever else they have. And if you are getting Josh Rosen, he's a rookie. You know, and he's yeah. coming in with a, with with a, um with the injury history, dude. Concussions too, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah. I personally, I would stay away from David Johnson if you could get him in the second round. That I think that's a steal. Yeah. Anything or, or, in the but, first. But the problem is, the problem is with draft. You, he's not going to fall to the second round. Yeah. No, he's, he's not. Still gonna but, he's still going to be better than he's still going to be better than guys like like Carlos Hyde because he's going to get volume. Volume is another determining factor of the value of a running back. Okay. Lamar Miller is a good example of that. He's not a very good running back, but his volume allows him to be a high-end running back too because uh, his talent level is down. Right. David Johnson's talent level is sky high. So his volume is only going to lead to him. Is this his third breaking... year, David Johnson? I don't know. I don't know what year it is for him. It might be his fourth or fifth year. Uh, I know definitely it's not, not his fifth. Third. I know it's not fifth. It's probably his fourth Maybe year. Fourth. Um, he's still... I think he's playing for his uh, for a new contract this year, essentially, because I don't think he was a first round pick. So I think this is his like final year for his rookie contract. I can go look that up, but regardless, it doesn't matter. He doesn't have a contract, so he's playing for a contract every year anyway. Uh, but this is the year where he's going to really try to do his best to show that maybe he can be like an Adrian Peterson and carry a really sorry ass franchise. So and they are sorry right now. Very sorry, bro. That team. I mean, they lost Bruce Arians. They lost Carson Palmer. They have this good rookie. riddance. Yeah, they, they have a rookie who. <laughs> you know oh, that, that that had a little a, a little personal. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's the reason why the Bengals were so average for so many years, and and Marvin Lewis. Yeah. yeah oh. So. Uh, why we? Why you gotta go to the? Uh, why'd you gotta bring up Marvin Lewis, bro? I was having a decent day. I, I think they should extend him another ten years. <laughs> I think you should. They just gave him an extension. They gave him an extension. They should give him two extensions. I would give that Every sniper an extension if he if he shoots <laughs> you right now. So, uh, so yeah. So let's go back to the rules and stuff like that. Yeah, so you so, have you so have, the, have the a, second a solid team, team, solid supporting cast, solid uh, supporting and, cast. Then you have like a good defense, good opportunity. Good de- yeah. Do you pay attention at all to schedule? I do. I do pay attention to schedule for certain for certain players. Some players are above their schedule. You know why always. I never really paid attention to schedule because the power rankings that come out they're all they're all crap anyway. You know. Oh, I don't pay. But I don't. I don't pay attention to. I have my own power rankings. Okay, so when you see when you see like I'll release that at some point in the future. But it's like like Jacksonville for example, right? Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna fall off a little, I think, because I don't think no, you could do really better. Not. I don't think they could well, be better well, than they the were last year. Touchdowns on the defense are very fluky, very fluky. Touchdowns on defense are very fluky. Yeah. You're not gonna get a re. You can't, you, they guarantee they're not gonna get that e, that's this year. Sexy, You're not gonna get though. nine or ten touchdowns on defense this year. It's yeah. not gonna happen. But I will say that they're probably still gonna get the same amount of turnovers, sacks, intos, maybe sacks? even more so because the Dude, players are all amazing. very young, they're all very young, and they're gonna only. That and this are. is them coming off of a really strong season so their swagger is sky high and their talent levels are sky high and the defensive coordinator is good they have a whole lot going for them so i really do think that they're going to be pretty amazing this year um, Who, who's their wide receivers um they got marquise lee i don't even else? marquise lee uh, i couldn't even tell you man i guess I, that's that's something uh let's look that up i know they got Fournette. they got mercedes lewis that, still right yep they probably don't, but we'll see. Let's see. Jaguars roster. I 
Mm, Blake Bortles in that wind up. They're not going to surprise anyone this year. He's no, he's not. He, no one's going to be surprised with him on offense. But for some reason, I because of the success he had with some of those newer wide right receivers that came, that came, that came on hot later in the season. There's this one kid those, named West. They're thinking that those guys have such a good relationship with him, and they were able to do that. That defenses are are not going to be able to handle the having Fournette back there along with T.J. Yeldon, uh, and I think they even drafted a, a running back as well this year. So I don't think. I think defense is going to try to focus on Fournette and the relationship that Bortles has built with Marquise Lee, who is very good wide receiver. He's injuries, good at the slot. Um, injuries. Injuries oh. with him are probably a big thing, but he's good at the slot. He's very reliable. He's a baller. So basically what I was saying is that um, the the the, uh, the wide receivers for the team that they have, I don't really know how they're going to play this year. Um, to me, they're a complete unknown, and, uh, and the Jaguars actually have Austin Safari and Jenkins. That was a oh god! Yeah. So they Was have he him. like on the um, Giants or like the Buccaneers? He was on the Jets uh, last Jeff? year. He was on the Jets last year. Um, I mean, he was on the the Buccaneers. He's the one dude that did that fumble, not fumble against the Patriots, right? On the oh. in the end zone. Yeah. So he's um, he's I mean, he's a good red zone threat. He definitely can can snag the ball pretty good in the in the uh, end zone. Uh, so that's pretty much. I think that's how they use him. Marquise Lee is probably going to be the chain mover. So who have. are you drafting on the Jaguars? Using using our three rules, good team, good see their supporting cast isn't as great, but they have a, a such a good defense that it. Yeah, so I it's guess. it's just Didi Westbrook and Keelan Cole. These are the two guys that came up last year. I like Westbrook. I like and, him as and, like, and a, I like I like both of those guys. I, I do, but the thing is. Not for fantasy football. I think they're going to be better for the team as a football team in real life versus right. the fantasy football. They're not draftable. I, they're not draftable because Blake Bortles is barely draftable. So you can't really right. can't really like pick somebody that he's throwing to to be reliable. Uh, he's not going to be reliable. Uh, defenses in that division are getting better, not worse. Um, so he's going to have a tougher time throwing. In that division, it's not going to be easy for him. And this, I, I'm what I, I think, from what I remember reading, is he, he also has a tough schedule this okay. year. Everybody in that division has a tougher schedule than they did last okay, year. Last so, year was a easier but, schedule, strength of schedule for the for the Tennessee Titans and, and the entire AFC South uh, versus this year. So this year they definitely have a little bit more of a so challenge. So Leonard Fournette is very draftable, right? From what to ten, what do you? How would you rate if he's in front of you and you're like the fourth pick or fifth pick? Are you taking Fournette? I don't, I don't, no, I'm not taking Fournette. No. Uh, well, yeah, how far you think he'll slide to like the second round? Second round. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay, he's I'll... a he's a low end running back one. In standard league, he's standard leagues. Uh, he's going to be a little more valuable, I believe, because um, they don't take into account the the receptions anyway. Okay. Uh, I, st- I still don't think he, he d- will get picked in the first round of standard leagues. There's just too much talent ahead of him. Uh, more versatile backs are going to put up more total yardage. Okay, uh, so running backs, like running backs are back in the forefront, you think, in fantasy? Yeah, they're back on Because I remember like I maybe like the last two years it's been like Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham. And- yeah, the, the, the wide receivers uh, – the last few years have dominated. Uh, a few running backs have, you know, come out of the woodworks, like uh, like Melvin Gordon, and have put up some really good, consistent fantasy football seasons. Uh, which is why, but this year it just seems like, of course, Antonio Brown's still a given. If anything, I I draft him over so, half the running backs. So he's going go. first round still, right? Like no. Yeah, doubt. you got it. I mean, because the thing is, they're going to run the spread offense now because Todd Haley's gone. So what I'm hearing is that they're going to be running a spread offense. And that just basically means the ball is going to be coming out a lot quicker. Uh, so I think Antonio Brown. So is you're not worried just, about Big Ben retiring like week week. week no, seven. he said he wants to keep playing. He wants to keep playing. And I think in this kind of offense where the ball gets out a lot faster, Big Ben doesn't have to doesn't have to uh, to to take the ball from under center. I think in an offense like that, it's going to suit him a lot better because he he's a very good quarterback. He knows how to make the reads. Uh, he has a strong arm. He has a quick release. He's mobile enough to to not get sacked in the pocket every single time somebody touches him. So I think in that with Juju Smith and, and Antonio Brown and Le'Veon there, no no one is going to really be able to – no defense is going to be able to just tee off on anybody. There's always going to be an opening there. Do so they have the best skill team, like the skill players? You think so? Yeah, they, 
Yeah, I think With they do. Juju, they do. I, I think they lost Brian. Ju- right? Juju's you know amazing. Like Juju's amazing, and I think uh, he may he may fall off this year. Who knows? Um, I don't. I, he was successful in Todd Haley's offense. He was a rookie last year. This is a new offense for him. I guess we'll see what he's really made out of if he's going to be so a really he, good second fiddle. But he has the skills, man. He's really good. I think he can. He runs really good routes. He's learning from Antonio Brown. He's a humble kid. And he's very, um, very, very young. I think he's yeah, like 20 years young. old. That's crazy. Yeah, so he's super so young. So you're saying the Steelers are better than the Bengals? Like I find that hard to believe. You have to explain to me why. As I look to you with a serious face. Yeah, because Bengals have literally re-signed Marvin Lewis <laughs> to a long contract. You know who they haven't re-signed? My love for them. Because I'm so moving on right now. <laughs> Come be a Titans fan, yeah, I'm bro. not being a Titans I'm fan, but I up, do I'm pick them. I'm opening up the door for you. I do pick I'll the Titans. keep the door wide open. I Lights told on. you this. Hot I food on the, the table. Titans to, we'll welcome you in. And we'll, we'll brush that nappy hair of yours, bro. We'll take care yeah, of you. These are curls. I want you to know that. You see the baby curls? I'm picking the Titans to represent the AFC in the divisional game. I said it here. That but I feel me. so. You're a smart man. That was me banging the gavel. You're a very smart man. I see. I didn't say go to the Super Bowl. I said represent the AFC. It's gonna be, and if they can beat the Patriots, if they can beat the Patriots, it's gonna be Titans, Saints, Titans, Saints in the Super Bowl. We've stolen everybody from the Patriots staff that's young, <laughs> hungry, and wants to continue the tradition of Patriot greatness. Except now it'll be Tennessee Titan greatness. Yeah. Just be prepared. Be ready for the wave, bro. The blue wave is coming. Uh, and I'm not talking about the fucking Democrats either. <laughs> so straight it's, football. It, it's like a it's like a um like a sky blue. You know? Sky blue wave. That's right. That's right. But the Bengals though. You you being serious about that? Bengals are bad. They're they're definitely uh, the epitome of mediocre. <clears throat> so that's it. What's up with Tyler Eifert? Is, is, is Tyler Eifert a draftable tight end? Never again. Why would anybody draft him? He can't. He can't stay healthy. This he's, man can literally cannot stay healthy. I thought. I thought Gronkowski was injury prone. That, this guy is just. He's not even half as good as Gronkowski. He gets hurt. Yeah, twice see, I more. see. You're being very disrespectful. I think he's. He's definitely better than half as good as Gronk. No. Ty, come on, tell I feel no. he's a talent at tight end. He really no. is. No. Name five tight ends in the league better than Tyler Eifert. Even though we only had a small sample. Delaney oh, Walker. Think, uh, Delaney, oh, of course I was gonna go Delaney Walker. Uh Jimmy Graham. Uh, oh Jimmy Graham. Well he is a very Travis Kelsey. So Travis yeah, Kelsey. Travis Kelsey for sure. Um you have uh, Zach Ertz. Oh okay, you got okay, okay. All right, Cameron Brake from the from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, Jack Doyle from the Doyle. Indianapolis Colts. Then we have who else? Who else is there? Oh, okay, is okay, okay, okay. Trey Burton from the Chicago Bears. It's gonna be better uh, than him. You'll see that first. Oh, no, I know from Philly. Right? Yeah, Trey Burton is no, gonna be real good. Trey Burton. Burton's gonna be real good. He made a lot of plays for Philly last year. In, in my sleeper list that eventually we will talk about later on in probably a different episode or something. Okay, but it's. So- so rule number three, schedule. Definitely pay attention to schedule. Schedule, yeah, schedule is really important because, to be honest, when when you play good teams or good defenses, rather, I think you need to worry about not so much good teams because I think strength of schedule, if you're looking at it from a fantasy perspective, is different than real-life uh, football okay. perspective, uh, do you, which is do obvious. You, do you watch preseason – preseason at all i know you watch I, preseason i, I only watch you preseason watching. only watch preseason so the thing is i'm a great evaluator of actual physical talent oh, uh, my background and my background in exercise physiology and strength and conditioning has allowed me to have a perspective on human movement that most layman's aren't going to understand <laughs> what is it? most civilians <laughs> yeah that's it i just can't i hear you so when you watch that's, me run my routes in the park, right, and it's all just that's like how he precision. Runs. That's actually how he runs. That's actually. <laughs> and it's he... all very precise, right? <coughs> what round do you prospect I would have been drafted in? Um, Barring my handsome in face. 1977. What happened? I said back in 1977, the 13th round. <laughs> I think you have the wrong sport, bro. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> what position? Um, left out. Oh, is that oh, right? Right next to the H two O to the H two O. 
Okay. Behind the HTO, not even next to him. I bro. got you're, you. You're cleaning the sweat off of my fucking neck. That's mm. that's the position. Yeah, you with got. a with a with a shiv. <laughs> <laughs> with a shank. So yeah, the uh the the fourth one I would say is especially for offensive players, is the scheme that they're playing in. Do they match the scheme? Do they match the scheme, and is the scheme any good? Um, the scheme is basically play calling, uh, ability from the coach, uh, the type of uh, run offense that they're going to be. Uh, okay, I like that. Um, Give me an example of a player that's o- that's outperformed like his skill sets just from the just off the fact that he's in a a, a very um, dynamic scheme. What do you? I'm sorry. I, just, I think I I'm not going to say anything. I think Alshon Jeffries, I think he's a good wide receiver, obviously, right? But I think that the scheme that the Eagles run, especially in the Super Bowl, it really showed, like, they were able to get him on one-on-one situations and just straight jump right. balls. You just know, use his size. His, his, his yeah, number one size. skill has always been to just win those, those 50-50 balls. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying he's he fits into what I'm saying <laughs> right now, into right. the whole scheme. I'm just saying that... I I think he's talented enough to win most one-on-one situations, right? But the Eagles scheme definitely make him a little... Like, he could be a superstar in this scheme that they run, you know? He could, he could, but I feel like Carson Wentz, the type of football he plays, especially with Nelson Aguilar there and and, um, Zach Ertz, Mm -hmm. And they and they like to use running backs out of the backfield to throw to as well. Um, they're definitely they're a team that spreads the ball evenly. I don't think there is a, a bona fide superstar on their team on offense outside of Zach Ertz. I don't think they're gonna have anybody like. I mean, even Jay Ajayi, he's gonna be limited because they're not gonna give him 300 touches this year. Opportunity is is everything. He's not gonna get enough opportunity to make a splash. He's gonna have some games where you go, damn, I wish I would have had him. Probably, probably have a few games like that. Um, if he's not the bona fide goal line back. I don't want him. Ajayi? They have yeah, that other the, kid. The other kid from the Super Bowl that was making all those catches. That Clements? kid. Yeah, Clements. Clements. Yeah. Clements is very good, but Clements is not the type of runner that Jay Ajayi. Jay Ajayi will wear you out. Yeah, he will. Deep. He will. But he will I like... wear you out, and, and then he'll break one. He always breaks big runs because he, he's just so damn strong and talented. But he, in that offense, again, they have a three hit. I mean, Darren Sproles is back. Darren Sproles is back. They re-signed him. You They're think gonna use Darren Sproles is going to make it out of Maybe they camp. use him strictly in like the kick return and punt return game. Maybe they realize that he's probably a little too hurt to come he's, back and play running back. He's older too. But he's now, but right? he's an X, he's an X factor. You know, he's he's still a very good player, and he has, it's not like he's lost that much of his ability to move. He's kept himself in pretty good shape, but that that, that lower leg injury of his is, is definitely going to hinder him from getting back to that explosiveness. So I feel like once they figure that out, once they realize that he's not as effective. Um, with the touches that he's getting, they're probably giving more to Jay Ajayi or Clements. Clements is the guy who's probably the more explosive running back at this point. I really like. I think Clements he's is. A, he's a very. He's got very good hands. He's got very good route running. He's a. He's a tough runner. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just. I like him, but he's not an inside. He's not in between the tackles kind of guy. Uh, whereas Jay Ajayi mm-hmm. is. Jay Ajayi needs an opportunity, and I think the the Dolphins didn't give him that outside of just that one year. And, I felt like the coach didn't want him the entire time. It was one of those things where he felt like maybe he was forcing it with Jay. Yeah, I heard that. So, I heard that. So with that said, uh, it is what it is. Like he got he got rid of him. He he showed everybody what he thought of Jay Ajayi. So and then Jay Ajayi goes and wins the Super Bowl. He had a decent year overall. I mean, he only had one touchdown rushing, which is just straight fantasy garbage. That's a headache. Um, but he's gonna he's the main guy there now. Look, okay, so you you're big on Jay Ajayi this year. That's what, that's what it sounds like. No, no, I'm not. I'm not big on Jay Ajayi this year. Well, mm-hmm. I don't even know why I continue to talk about him. I'm just saying that in terms of like where the off, where the offense for the Eagles fits into the greater fantasy scheme. I just think there's only it one. It sounds like you're pick. lying and you're trying to. That's probably gonna be your first round pick, Jay Ajayi. That's what it sounds definitely, like. Definitely Looking into not. your eyes, it sounds like you're going Jay Ajayi. And I, I, he, he forgive might. me for giving away your secret right there. But <laughs> you can't bl- um, I know you, so you, just, you can't blame me for that. I'm just calling it out. I see it. So, Jay okay. Ajayi, first round, huh? What pick are you? I don't have any. My, my picks aren't in yet. Okay. So He's going Jay Ajayi, am, guys, by the way. I don't want to be the manager of my league this year. We're, we're supposed to hand it off to the winner of every year. I didn't win last year. So... Somebody else should be the manager, but it just seems like 
everyone's incompetent, so I have to do everything myself. So I'll probably have to take care so of that. Scheme. You know what? You know who I think fits what I was trying to say earlier about the scheme better than um, who I said Alshon is um yeah. Julian Edelman, for example. Now he's not sure. like an outside wide receiver, right? No, but when they no. put him outside. He just tends to get open because the scheme they run is so dynamic. Yeah, the yeah, they, yeah, exactly, exactly. It, and, and he's a good route runner. He's not. Yeah, he is. He's and he's a, a dog. He got that dog mentality. Yeah, he, he, and that's he why he gets hurt a lot because he's, yeah. he's fighting for everything, and he doesn't have the, the the physical tools to just separate. He has to fight for everything, and that makes him an excellent football player, but also makes him always hurt. Okay, so we got a good team, good supporting cast on the offense, a good defense. Right, uh, s- strength of schedule scheme. Right. Yeah. What could be our fifth rule? Uh, maybe the ability to stay healthy. How injury prone they are. Availability, but Availability. that's a tough one, important. though. Right. Cause... It's not a tough one. I mean, no one's gonna. You can't listen. If you go into a season with Gronkowski, you can't <laughs> be shocked. No. That he gets hurt. No, but but that's too easy. Him. That's too easy. I just, I mean, there's, there's a ton, there's tons of players who, who like, really let's say you, off. you had picked up like the Deion Lewis is another one. Deion Lewis had an amazing year last year for where he was drafted. His ADP was, was really low last year, and he wanted okay. putting up like David Johnson. How the hell are you supposed to know that he was injured his wrist and be out the whole season? That well, hurts. You tune into this, you tune, you tune into this podcast. And you listen to my advice. Oh, you definitely true. know Dave That's Johnson true. is going to uh, be eligible if, if he's going to be healthy this year. Just listen to me, folks. Okay. I know everything. Nice plug. That's right. Pay attention to me. You will so, you will win tons of fortune. So you think if you're the first pick, right, and you pick, um, who who you said? Not Fournette. Well, um, Gurley. And you uh, pick Gurley number one. You, yeah. And if he goes down week one, you still think you'll be in a good position to just carry on. With my the way, with the way that I'm gonna be drafting, yeah, the, I, I've done a few mock. I've done probably close to a hundred mock. He's drafts so modest that I, I, I admire. So, him. I've I've because I've rec- I've had seasons where I've recovered from bad. I won my championship in my big money league last year, and I had a lot of injuries happen to me late in the year that took away from my team. They weren't like my number one guys, but they were guys that were important to the balance of my team, and I overcame it. So it's it's just a matter of depth. And depth d- is determined by your skill in drafting. If you're a so, horrible drafter, maybe your first four picks go really well. But that's that should be that way. It should go that way for most teams. Your first four picks should probably not be awful if you're good at what you do. So you're saying that the first round doesn't define how good your team can be? It, it can for certain positions. I feel like if you're number 12 and your guy gets hurt, that's probably going to be really hard to bounce back from because your number three and four picks are not going to be in the same quality. So, so, so. Because the time, you're, the time, by the time you draft again, mm-hmm. it's going to be way far away. You already had to wait to draft at number, at number 12, and then you got to wait again to get your number three and four. So you hear that, you're not gonna, you're, you're going to lose. You're probably going to lose. If you're so in you're, the bottom half of the draft, try to pick someone that you, yeah, you try, know try to that be, consistently Try to stay healthy. away from. I would say the, the number one goal for me at the bottom of the first round is to stay away from wide receivers for the most part. Because I feel like with especially this year with the depth in wide receiver, I don't have to go chasing after any guy at all. Unless DeAndre Hopkins falls to number 12. You know, like, he's not going to fall to number 12. If he does, take him. But I'm not, outside of the stud studs, like, like you know, like um, Julio Jones and, and Antonio Brown and DeAndre Hopkins, like, Odell's not even on that on, on my list of draftable players in the first round. I wouldn't injury? draft the first round because of that injury. That was a nasty injury, and also I don't, I don't know enough about his his rehab right now to say. Look, Odell is actually for a been contract, doing the work. Bro. Odell will be a beast. I think personally, Odell. Yeah, oh no, he'll be a beast. I, I mean, think he's gonna be the number one wide receiver. Julio season. Jones has been a beast, and he's been playing through a lot of foot injuries probably his entire career since he since he got drafted. He's been playing through foot injuries. And you're starting to see the the toll it's taken on him now. But the thing is, he's never. He, I don't remember him breaking anything since he's been in the NFL. Odell broke something. That he was broke that was a, a a savage. Nasty. That was a nasty injury. Like that's it not was, but it was it was um. It got him jogging unlucky. right now. 
Well, they got him jogging right now, and that it's oh, not a gonna bad. Be, he's going to be a hundred percent week one. I he's guess. young. He's got youth on his side. He's he's got maybe the hunger on his side. If he's as serious about his rehab as he is about practicing football, then he'll come back good. The offensive scheme, I want I want to see how, how good he is in it. I mean, he can run pretty much every route. So as long as he understands the play call, I'm sure he'll be able to execute properly. He's a beast. But okay. with that but being I just said, it, it seemed like he got. I don't know. It just seems like people have been hitting him a lot harder these days, <laughs> and yeah, I don't know if uh, I they're don't know if trying. he's good. his body. He doesn't look like the kind of guy who he he goes for so many balls that I feel like he exposes himself a lot, and people are starting to take shots at him, and that's how he got hurt. And now he got hurt trying to catch a ball that was basically uncatchable, but to him it was catchable, and he wound up getting hurt. I don't think he needs to. I think Eli needs to get his shit together if yeah, Odell's going to yeah, stay healthy. Blame Eli Odell, Odell shouldn't have been put in that position. It wasn't yeah. his fault. He's just trying to make a play, but Eli didn't have to throw such a horrible ball that forced him to make uh, an adjustment. So like, on uh, the subject of Odell and Eli, what do you think about Saquon Barkley? What round, right, and what will his production look like this year? Oh, he's going in the first round. You, it, doesn't matter what I, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what I think he's going to go. It's it's what he what he's going right now is in the first round. He's going in the first round. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think he's a I think he's the bottom of the first round, like top of the second round pick. Uh, right now, people are picking him. I think in like number eight. So, that's definitely uh, it's definitely something. Number eight. I don't know. Saquon. That, okay. That's that's really risky for me. Uh, I'm seeing him getting picked before Alvin Kamara, which is a fucking. You talking about like mock drafts? Right. In mock drafts so far, I've done over a hundred of them. I wouldn't so, take Saquon over Alvin Kamara. No me way. Me either, but, that, but that's what you're seeing some people do. Those people, I hope I play against. I'm hoping I play you against. You know why you idiots. can't do that? Because, first of all, Kamara is a proven, proven, proven all, all pro player. Right? That's number one. Sure. Sure. Saquon's coming into the league as a rookie. Rookie running yeah. back isn't necessarily the easiest thing to pick up because you have to worry about pass coverage. And even some veterans still struggle with that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then you have to consider the Giants O-line has been one of the worst in the league in the last multiple years. Right? And I know they, they looked about it in the draft and in free agency, but that's something that when it comes to O O line, that takes some time for that for that to gel, for that to mesh, for that combination. I completely agree. I completely agree. But now the the, the catch is that they have a completely new offensive scheme now. Pat Shermer's offense is, I think I think he's I think he's going to be able to create that cohesiveness there. Okay. So uh, so they have a thirty six year old. How was Eli now? 36, 37 year old quarterback. Yeah. Right. He's up there. Who yeah. hasn't been showing? He, um, I mean, he's been showing to be on the decline. Right. They have an outstanding yeah. wide receiver, but can he stay healthy? They have a. They have outstanding wide receivers. Yeah, they have a good slot receiver, and they have a really, really good tight end. I really like that kid, Ingram. Right. Yeah. So they have a pretty good solid offense, right? It all comes down to the O line and how Eli stand, keeping Eli upright, right? But there's one more thing yeah. with Saquon though. He's not a high. He hasn't been a high volume running back even in college, right? Now he's explosive, out of his mind, mm -hmm. explosion. But in Penn State, he wasn't really toting the ball like thirty plus times a game. You know, and he, he won't be. He won't be in the Giants' offense. offense. He, he won't be. Uh, you'll, you'll see more of how Dalvin, Dalvin Cook got used. Or uh, like he got hurt. McCaffrey, you think? Um, because he yeah, got, I guess, guess in terms of touches, touches sure. Yeah, he got I think in terms of touches. I don't know. It's it's, it's tough, tough because the thing is, is listen, no no one expected Green Hunt to be this good, good right? So they gave him the ball. But what happened was with Green Hunt, he was very inconsistent last year. He had, like, six really good games and then, like, had six bad oh, games dude, and he came on hot late. The play calling. So, for, so and, and I agree with that. It, it was the play calling. They were only giving him They were giving him less touches during his, uh, his hold little long. Hold on. Got the phone ring. Yo!
Alright guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today's video... What the hell are we waiting for? <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What was that saying? Talk about Saquon. Um. Yeah. Talk about Saquon. Saquon. So yeah, yeah Saquon, Saquon. You might put up the same year uh, that that uh, Kareem Hunt put up. He's. Uh, we'll see. We'll see, man. Uh, Pat Shermer has a good offense. I'm not sure if he's making. He's, Where's he coming uh, from? Um, Pat Shermer. He's coming to the Vikings. He's the Vikings. Uh, he was the Vikings uh, offensive coordinator. So, I'm, I'm thinking this. I mean, he, I don't think he's ever had success as a head coach. So, it's going to be tough to see if he can actually replicate what he had in Minnesota over there in New York. We'll, we'll see, man. Like, that, that's a tough one. That's, that's why I feel like I, if I, it depends on the kind of league I'm playing. If I'm playing in a really low-wage league, like we're not really putting in a lot for our teams, I'll take a gamble on somebody like Saquon for the hell of it. But in my big money league, In the first round. In the first round, I would, I would take a chance on him. Um, because the payoff could be great. I mean, Kareem Hunt came in. Uh, completely under the radar because no one really respected what his what his uh, skill set was in college. I remember very Kareem in college. I remember him very elusive in college. He put up a lot of yards. And Kamara, and Kamara went in yeah. the third round too. Yeah, and it's just kind of like almost you got to look at kind of what the the tail behind the tape with some of these running backs coming out of college. Like for instance, uh, what's this kid's name uh, from the Seahawks? Oh man, the rookie that they drafted. Oh, I don't remember. Only no, only person I know running back from the Seahawks is Rawls. He's not there anymore. Yeah, I know he's not there anymore, but that dude cost me. The last fantasy I played, last time I played fantasy football, I think I had him on my team, and he was injured for 98% of the season. Yeah, so Rashad Penny is this guy's name. And Rashad Penny was, uh, I think, rated the most elusive running back coming out of the draft. Uh, by pro fans, pro football focus. So, typically, when they give these elusive ratings, they're they're, they're almost right all the time. Uh, he's gonna like, need if, he's gonna need that plus more with that offensive line they have over there in Seattle. Yeah, they do. I mean, the, the Seahawks are giving this they have a very good center, so at least they have that. Now they just need four more pieces. <laughs> we'll see. And we all know we'll that's see. very easy to find. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll see if if they if they can. Get that going this year, but Rashad Penny is going to be. He's a complete running back. He's a guy who can do everything. He can block, he can catch, he can run in between the tackles. He can do it all. He's elusive. Uh, he runs with a little bit of power. I mean, it sounds like he's going to be a stud, but we don't really know that, right? Because we just don't. We don't know. Uh, Rashad, I have to see. This is what the preseason is for, for guys like him. I don't trust uh, Seattle's O line, bro. And that's the thing. We have to see. They, they got, there's certain. So you can't judge a team off of the prior the, the prior year's performance sometimes, especially when they've tried to make changes. Not like the Bengals when they make no changes or they get worse and then you try to draft the players well, I feel like you're personally well. like attacking me. So back to what I was saying before. It's funny though because you got the Bengals colors the sofa's Bengals colored. This, this and is not a burnt orange. This that not that's burnt orange this, enough. And your headset is Bengals. Your, your headset is Bengals colored. Yeah, or orange. Yeah. What are you looking at? No, this is Turtle Beach. They're the that's color orange. of a turtle. When I filter this, when I filter this video and I edit it, that's gonna be orange. Trust me, all of that. And I'll put, no. like, a bangle scratch on that sofa, too, if I want to. You'll be hearing from my lawyer for I'm defamation. I'm photoshopping the shit out of that. If you defame me like, if you defame me like that, that's going to be that's gonna be your yeah. ass. And no, bro, I didn't sign. I didn't sign. I'm going to take everything you own, that green screen, all those, all those steroids next to you, and your all those alcohol supplements, taking everything from you. Your cheap $50 headset, I'm taking all that stuff from you. Nope. Bangles till we die, bro. So, so, um, so, how do you prioritize quarterbacks? Um, what round do you think quarterbacks should start get, coming off the the board? Um, I, to, to me, it's a. Pr- I think it's only based on your draft strategy. Um, that's who's, what. I who's the top they're, they're, quarterback if you were drafting right now? 
See, the thing is, that's tough to say. This is a, it's it's Carson because, Wentz because the top guy changes every year quarterback. That's no, that is, no, that's true. Yeah. That's true. That given. So it's hard to pick the number one guy. Would that's you, why you just gotta go with it. If you got a quarterback in the top ten, you'll be fine. Just try not to mess that up. That's it. If, there's, if you're in a ten team league, if you can't get a guy in the top ten, you're an awful drafter, and you need to watch this show. Okay, wait, 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 wait. It's kind of erasing a little bad. Would you draft a quarterback in the first three rounds? You can. You can. No, would you? Would you personally? Me? No, no never. never. I would okay. never. I would never. I would never. Okay. So don't tell people you can, and then you say you would never, because you're kind of setting up. I would never. I would never. Well, no, the thing is because my draft strategy is particular to that. And if somebody has it, there are other draft strategies. I've seen people win by drafting the quarterback in the third or fourth round. I've seen it, but their strategy had to kind of revolve around that. The way I draft is just not going to be that way. I'm never going to have a quarterback at number four. I think the first three rounds would have to go incredibly awful for me where I'm like not getting anybody I want somehow and then I'm stuck with like alright I gotta get somebody elite on my team to at least anchor the, the base points for myself every week and then I'd probably go quarterback but that hasn't ever really happened because the talent pool is so deep in, in running back and wide receiver um, and especially the first round like I'm definitely gonna get who I want in the first round so I really don't have to reach for a quarterback and there's no quarterback right now worth reaching for I don't think I don't think Aaron Rodgers is worth it. Cam Newton finished number two last year, and and, uh, and your boy uh, Russell Wilson finished number one. Deshaun I, Watson or Carson Wentz? Um, I'm going Carson Wentz still. I'm still going to go Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz has a better offensive line around him. Deshaun Watson has nobody protecting him. That Deshaun Watson or. Or um, Tom Brady. Tom Brady. I go with Tom. I go with Tom Brady. I know what he's gonna, gonna get me. I know what he'll get. Deshaun Watson. It's always gonna be. It's always gonna be top five performance. Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson. Uh, I go with Russell Wilson. The offense, offense wasn't very good last year, year and he still finished number one. Okay, because so. it sounds like you're a little anti Deshaun. Deshaun Watson or Marcus Mariota. I, yeah, okay. Okay, so this is the end of the podcast, guys. Hope you enjoy. Send all your angry emails at this guy right here. A Titan-friendly pick. Always. You're serious. You're not serious. He's, serious. No, he's not. Serious. Serious. You're not serious. I'm serious. You're not serious. I'm very serious. I'm very serious. If you don't think that Marcus Mariota has a better skill set than Deshaun Watson, you're blind. I'm not talking he has about a significantly skills. better skill set. And he has a brand new team with a brand new offense. you got to believe. So you're pretty low on Deshaun Watson this year. I'm not low on him. I'm just you. You gotta be if you're choosing Mario. You just, you just happen to be on it. You, you just sold pick. everyone on you your just skills. To pick, you just happen to pick all the quarterbacks that I think are better than him. I'm not asking like, you who's better. I'm asking you who's the better fantasy player. Yeah, and that's what I mean. For the, for the entire the better, season, they're the better. They're the better you're fantasy quarterback. You're telling me Mariota. Marcus Mariota is going to be the better fantasy quarterback than Deshaun Watson this year. No one's gonna believe it. Because everyone's because gonna ride on that bandwagon. Normal. They're gonna ride on that bandwagon that they saw from last year when they when the Texans were so playing think he's gonna really be... weak teams on their schedule. Um, all right, and, really and defensively weak teams. Dude, every team in schedule. that division is weak except for the um the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Titans. The Titans. <laughs> the, the Titans wrong. Didn't they blow you guys out? They just no. they just we, no, 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 they did. No, no, they did. That was week. That was week three, I believe. Uh, so that was, we that was before Deshaun was playing. Our team was very – no, no. Deshaun was playing. That was, I think that was the second game that he played. I don't think so because uh, I remember Deshaun made his first start against the Bengals. And yeah. The, and the Bengals kind of shut him down until he made that one scamper. And then he stiff-armed like five of our players and jumped yeah. into the end zone. Professional tacklers, you will stiff on them. Yeah, but we don't have a professional coach, so you can't hold that against us. Mariota is not having. He's he's being a homer, guys. Mariota is not having a better season. I, in the I show guarantee us. you that Mariota is going to. He's been sipping on that a, crazy tea. He will finish. He will finish at least one or two spots ahead of Deshaun no, Watson. But it's not even a given if he will finish in general. Oh, it is this. It'll be this year. Listen, the, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mike Malarkey was Wishful just awful. Fate. It was god awful. It was god awful. 
they didn't have any good play calling. Terry Robisky was god awful. They didn't call proper plays at all. Well, and, okay, so Mike Vrabel. The fact that we want and and you're saying that we want a playoff game was a goddamn miracle. So what that, makes you think that, that Vrabel that. is bringing in the potent offense? Or even Rabel, the protection Rabel, to protect Mario. Rabel's going to bring in the execution of excellence, bro. All right? Oh, is he? <laughs> oh, my God. What's wrong with you? So sorry. See, that's what you get for all that fallacy. For talking all that nonsense, bro. Mariota made of dust gods smite you right now. That's what they're doing. For you to even come he, out he your mouth. To get the, he needs to get, to get the volcano gods to, to, to tame down that volcano <laughs> destroying his homeland. <laughs> Too real. Too real. Um... Mariota is not gonna have. A, you wanna you wanna bet us? Uh, you want twenty dollars? I bet you last year that the Bengals would get beat up by the Titans. I, and you I said twenty dollars, and I'm still waiting for my twenty dollars. As long as if Mark make a bet, Lewis is still in charge of the Cincinnati Bengals, if we make I would a bet, never bet in their favor. That's how I know you're if lying. We met, if we make a bet, you thought the Titans were gonna be awful last I, year, and you, when wrong, did I say and you were wrong. I you said, said it to my face. Oh well, yeah, it's funny because I haven't seen you in a year plus. Well, well, he, he said, said it before, before I left. Oh, okay. The, I left in March, before the, right after the season ended. He said the Titans are never going to be anything. I remember, I'm going to remember the words. <laughs> I said that. Titans got a chance when Tom Brady retires. What you happened? You got a chance when Tom Brady retires. No. We're, We're going to make Tom Brady retire. Oh. We're going to force him to retire. Tom, you hear that, Tom? Let me text him. Yep. Tom, you heard that? Oh, he's calling me. Tom, no. I'm doing it. No. No, Tom. Chill. Babysit? No, that's okay. that's more likely Tom from MySpace than Tom Brady from the New England Patriots. Is that Tom from MySpace? <laughs> Tom, I'll call you back. All right? Yeah, get Gronk to camp. No, you, no, you don't know any white people. people. You can no, sit you don't down. Know any white people. Tom, you can sit down. No, any white people. Take the ear off. Nah, Bill Belichick, he's trying to play you. All right, take the ear off. All right. I'll come substitute? Nah, Tom, I got things going on. All right, I'll call you back. Tom said hi, by the way. He said nice shirt. <laughs> I bet he's, he's trying, trying to live. He's trying to look, look like me. me. Yeah, so, so I may have to call Deshaun Watson <gasps> later on to tell him this. this Deshaun, Deshaun is, is healing I, from the ACL injury. The, the pocket's gonna be collapsing around him on a, on a, a freaking play-by-play <laughs> basis. He will. He will not last the season. He will not last the season. He's frail. Marcus Mariota is not frail. Uh, you, are uh, you sure? I think Marcus Mariota's played like 60% of, of his game so far. He played, he played, I think, all the games last year. But the problem was he was healing from an injury from the year prior. So now he's fully healthy. He's, a much, he's in a much better offense. He has a much better running game than the Texans do. That's a guarantee. We have a better, we have a way significantly better offensive line. Way better offensive line. And we're going to have a better defense. So that's all in the favor of Marcus Mariota. We're going to have more. So let's see if that goes on your rules, right? You don't have a better supporting cast. Let's be Yes, we do. Oh, we, we absolutely you're, do. You don't have a we absolutely You do. are we absolutely all. Do. You uh, can't say DeAndre Hopkins is going is gonna to over, uh, is gonna override. I can make a case that DeAndre Hopkins is the best wide receiver in the game. I can make that case right now. He is, of course. Of course. I can, uh, you can make that case. I mean, Antonio Brown is definitely the best wide receiver in the game, but. You, you can make, make you can try, try to make the argument with DeAndre and nobody else. There's nobody, nobody else that even comes close to that argument. Okay, so even, you know. I, I think Odell. I personally think Odell is the best player. Is the best. Odell, player. Odell has an injury. Well, I can make he injured his rookie season. He was injured his rookie season. Had two years where he wasn't injured, and then he got hurt again last year. I'm sorry. That's 50 percent of the time he's he's been hurt. Two, two out of four seasons he's been hurt. The best ability is availability. I give you that. So. so to me, I'm more worried. His body is not built. He he's a he's an amazing skill player, and his body can do kinds of crazy shit. I don't think he's built for football. When I look at him, and I look at guys like um, who's a like a who's a well built wide receiver that like a Corey Davis. Even a Corey Davis. I'm not saying Corey Davis is better than Odell, but I'm looking at a Corey Davis. Well, all this like, always circle circle around the um, Titans, though. Could, could we could we have some diversity? All right, AJ Green. Let's go AJ Green. That's a perfect example. AJ Green is built for the NFL. The way his body's built. Now we go to the he's, Bengals. He's muscular. Like... He's lean. He looks strong. Odell is just one of those guys who's extremely his his finesse is the highest level of finesse. You know what I mean? Like he's. He's got. He can run routes. He's so very fast. He's elusive. 
He can jump and snag balls out of there. His finesse is the ultimate finesse. There's nobody who finesses the ball better than Odell Beckham. But he is not built to take these hits. I think he's with, not. with Odell he's not with built the to take ball these... in his hand, he's the best wide receiver in the game. Of course, and I agree. Like I said, he's the best finesse guy, but he's not going to be breaking tackles. He's going to make guys miss. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm not judging him off of that. What I'm saying is he's he's not built for toughness. He's not built for toughness. He's not. Okay. He's going he's gonna to get – I think he's – Fair enough. Say, he's, I think safeties are getting faster. They're getting better. Not that that's going to stop him from stop him from catching the ball, but when he catches the ball, he's going to be getting a lot of big hits moving forward, because he puts himself. He tries to catch everything, no, no matter what, and that's respectable. But that gets you hurt, just like the way Anquan Bolden used to get hurt trying to score a touchdown every time he got the ball when he was younger. Not him getting hurt too much, he had to change his game. You're not going to. I mean, Odell is not going to be able to make all these big catches for, for his whole career. Look at Calvin Johnson. Look at the toll it took on his body. And he's way and, bigger than Odell. And he's Megatron. And he's way bigger than Odell. And he, all those fantastic catches took a toll on his body. Get hit while you're in the air because you can make the play. Just because you can make it, you shouldn't try to. But that's what they get paid for. Yeah. They get paid for. So it comes with it. Uh, look at Julio Jones. He's so to wrap this up, up, the five yeah. rules. What was the fifth rule? Available? Fifth rule of injury history. Okay. So rule number one, guys, make sure your support and cast on offense mm -hmm. is formidable. Yeah. Right. Rule yeah, number yeah. two, if you have a good defense, the more opportunity you'll get. Yep. So that, that works helps. in you more opportunity, more football to go around. Rule number three, schedule. Strength mm -hmm. of schedule, the weaker schedule better opportunity for thus players to run wild rule number four is scheme so make sure if you have a possession wide receiver if he's in a possession scheme that's going to fit him well if he's in a down the field big play you know Aaron Rodgers scheme you know you want to go for the the um who's on the Packers right now that's like their downfield threat um uh Devante? Be, Devante? um Devante. okay yeah. And rule number five is your injury history. So I guess no Odell. He says no. I think Odell's going to be the best Odell wide receiver is, this year. He's not going to be the best wide receiver this year, but he will be. Uh, he'll be good. He'll be good if he can stay healthy. That's my thing. I wonder if he'll be so able to no stay healthy. So no Edelman. Everyone's no. going to be hitting him low because of the rules in the NFL. So remember, he had a lower leg injury. Mm -hmm. Defenders are going to be aiming low to hit him a lot, especially because of how elusive he is. Take his feet from under him. I don't know, man. We'll see. Maybe he does last this season, but I, he may not come back. He may get hurt in 2019 or 2020. He's going to get hurt again at some point the way he I think I think I could add another rule to this, right? I think you got to pay attention to these coaches and how they call the plays. Because I guess I could fall into scheme, I guess. Because yeah. some coaches... That's what it is. That's what scheme their, is. Scheme is play their, calling. They take the foot off the gas once they get a lead. Yeah. So watch out for those coaches. Stay away from those coaches. I just I, I don't think they need to to throw Odell across the middle all, as yeah. often as they do. I really don't think they need to do that. Um, so, so teams like the Steelers that you know they try to go for it on every two down, um two play conversion, two point conversion. Like that's yeah, the yeah. aggressiveness that that you want to see, and that's why Antonio Brown is is such a good pickup because the coach. He just he just wants to just like step on your throat and, and he's just, and he's open a lot and, and banish you. Lot. Yeah, and he's a great player. So, but Le'Veon having this whole contract thing, you know, that's whatever. Can't, but just keep an eye on that. Him. If you have an early August draft, good luck. Unless yeah. it, this gets settled before August, and I don't think it will. Rule number seven. Uh, this, don't have August drafts. Please. At least yeah, wait till that, the preseason. It's got to be at least the first, like the last four days before the season at starts. At least. Like that, that's the window for all yeah, drafts you're but just throwing your some money people have the these early life. drafts that's just laziness Why? that's just trying right. like you have no respect for yourself <laughs> if you do that it's just too excited and it's fine to be excited no, seriously, about football, it's not just excited but... it's just like it's almost lazy like you're just trying to get it out the way instead yeah. of doing the right do thing your research, that would make guys. it the most competitive so stick, stick well, let's to, end stick it there to your plan yeah, yeah. yeah. alright this is G that's B he's a four time champ or some bull crap four. like that I give him one trying to make it Trying to make it six this year. Trying I to make it six. Lucky I, I put up ten. That's that's soon. But that's join six. us again next week. We'll six tell you. Week. We're gonna focus on. We probably gonna have some mock drafts, and we'll see how that goes. We'll see if he employs his own rules and he's talking out of his ass. But You'll anyway. see my consistency, folks.
You'll see it. It was a pleasure. Yeah.